Today we're going to talk about something I find really exciting is an update to the ERS API. So we're all familiar with CRUD, create, read, update, delete. And those are the four operations that we use when using our API commands. So what we've done with ICE 3.2 is we've updated the update command. Instead of using the put, we're going to use a patch command. So our request is not going to be a put request, it'll be a patch request. As you can see here, this is what we would have to send in a put command to update the password for a user in ICE. So we would have to put through every attribute that exists in that user to be able to update it. Now with the patch command, we only have to put through the attributes that are specific to what we want to change. As you can see, we're using the same URL for the change we're just using a different request instead of a put we're using a patch so first thing we need to do in ice is we need to go ahead and enable the api so to do that we go to administration system settings then we'll click on api settings and then we'll look at api service settings and this is where you enable the api services go ahead and click save here then once you do that, you're going to be able to use the API commands. So I save all of my work in the app called Joplin. It's really quick and easy to use. It's a markdown editor. And you can see I'm using curl for all of my commands for API. So in my Linux terminal, I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux here. I'm going to make sure I install curl. I do it as a sudo app install. And as you can see, I've already got it installed here. So I'm going to take this full command that you see here in my Joplin. You can see I'm going to create a new network device. So that's the network device screen first. So you can see all my network devices I currently have. And then once we go back to Joplin, copy this whole request to create a new device, you can see the name of it is test device. I'm setting a password and all of that. So we're going to copy that, go back into our terminal application, and we're going to paste it here. Then once we hit enter, you'll see that we get an HTTP response of 201. So anything in the 200 range is a success. Anything in the 400 range is a failure. So 200 is a success. So we'll go back to ICE, and we're going to refresh our network device list here. Once we refresh that network device list, you're going to see our test device is listed. Once we see that, go ahead and click into the test device. We're going to scroll down and we're going to verify that it's the password is the same as what we had sent to it, the 10.234. So in ICE, we're going to go back to our network device list here. So we can see all of our devices. You can see that one is listed in the center of our list. So if we go back into Joplin, now that we have it created in ICE, we need to do a get on our network devices so we can get our specific device ID. So this is the end for the get. We're just going to get all the network devices that we have. We've only got five, so it's going to be easy for us to see. The one that says test device. As you can see here, we got another HTTP response of 200. And the test device has an ID above it, and this is the information we need to get the specific information about the device that we've created. So we're going to copy that ID, then we'll go back over to Joplin, and we'll paste the ID where we have the ID placeholder text. Once we do that, we can copy the GET request, go ahead and clear our screen so we have a clean screen to work with, and we're going to use that to get all the attributes that exist for this device. What we're going to do next is we're going to take that ID and we're going to use a put command to update the name and the password for this device. As you can see here, the put request has all the attributes that are needed for the device. So if we leave any of these attributes out, the ERS will see that as not needed and it will delete any missing information. So we have to keep all that information in as we paste this into our terminal. As you can see, it returns only what we have changed when we do this. Uh, the old value and the new value for the passwords are actually masked in the return here. So let's go into ICE. You see we refresh and it said the put device is the name of it. 
scroll down to radio shared secret show it and you can see that the password has been updated to the password that we sent over in our put it's important to note that the put command gives a response of only the attributes have been changed not the full list of attributes so we're going to go back to our network device list over here and now we're going to go back into joplin and let's clear this screen here so we have another clean screen to work with so you can see we're going to update the name of our device again but instead of just updating the name we're going to update the name and password here so we're going to grab this curl command for a patch request we're going to change the name we're going to add a description and update the password so we're going to do three different things with this command here so go ahead and paste that in here press enter we get our http request uh response it is 200 here and we can see that we've updated the name the description and the password so let's go back into ice we'll refresh our network device list here and then we're going to have a patch test device so as you can see here patch test and with that you can see the new description that we've updated as well so go ahead and we're going to go into this device and we're going to scroll down to our radius shared secret our radius shared secret shows that our password has actually changed so this way you can see how quick and easy it is to update using the patch command now the response that we get from the ers request for patch is a lot longer than what we got from the put command so it responds with all of the attributes instead of just what has changed and also notice that the password is not masked in the response with the patch request the password is masked in the put command but not in the patch command so we don't need this device anymore so i'm going to go in here and delete this device Then once that's done, one of the things that's most exciting about this new patch command is if we go over here into the hotspot guest portal is we can create or update our own passphrase within the guest portal just by using the patch command. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to go back into Joplin and look at all of this text that we have to select here. This is going to create a new hotspot portal. And we have to, of course, grab every attribute that we can to create this portal. Otherwise, it, those attributes will not be created. So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll go back over and we'll clear our terminal. And look, it's a lot of information. So we're getting error says, hey, you're sending a lot of information through the clipboard. Do you want to do that? We say, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And we get our HTTP, HTTP request of 20 back, which means it's been created. So if we refresh our guest portals page in ice you're going to see that we have a new guest portal and the guest portal name here is going to be hotspot portal create and this is the one that we've just created through our api so now if we go back here to joplin we have to do another get command so we can get the id of the specific guest portal we've just created so we're going to go ahead and get request for our portal you can see that we've got a few in ice over on the left side and in our terminal we have them listed here all three of them so we want the one for hotspot guest portal create and we're going to capture and copy that id for that guest portal go back over into joplin and then we're going to take that ID that we just copied and paste that into our ID placeholder for all of our ERS commands for the hotspot portal. This will allow us to retrieve every attribute that is possible from this guest hotspot portal. So let's go ahead and clear our screen and then we're going to issue our get request for this specific portal. Now once we press enter here we're going to get every attribute that's possible and we're concerned about the passphrase so we have to scroll all the way here and this is going to be contained in the 
uh, include AUP section. So if we look at that section up here, it's going to be under the portal settings and then AUP settings. If you see that include AUP is true, require access code is false, and require scrolling is false. Back over, take a look at our patch request and often you can see that we are only sending the AUP settings that turn on the access code. So require access code is true. And then we're setting the access code. So let's go ahead and copy that back over to our terminal. We're going to clear the window and paste it and send it. Again, with the patch command, like I said, you get every attribute from that object. So the whole attributes from your hotspot guest portal are going to be sent. So let's scroll all the way back up so that we can verify that we've changed what we wanted to. Yes, you can see our acquire access code is now set to true and the access code is set to what we had sent over. If you want, you can go over into the ICE GUI, open up the guest hotspot portal here, go into the acceptable use policy page settings, and you can see that the required access code is now turned on and the access code is set here. So let's go ahead and we're going to go back to our portals list and then clear the screen on our terminal, go back into Joplin. And what we're going to do is to update that access code, we don't have to worry about the require access code setting. We just have to send over the new access code. So let's go ahead and copy this over, go back to our terminal. We're going to paste this into the terminal here. And as you can see, we're only sending the access code. So let's paste that, scroll all the way back up, verify in the response that our access code has been changed. And as you can see, there we go. There it is. Ice is cool again. So let's go back into the hotspot portal inside ice. We're going to click back onto the acceptable use policy page settings. And you can see that the access code has been updated inside the GUI as well. Now that we've done all that, I no longer need this guest portal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ERS to send over a simple delete request to actually delete the guest portal out of ice. So back over into Joplin, go ahead and take a look at our delete request. We've got the ID and everything already set. So let's copy that, go back into our terminal and paste that. Once we press enter here, you can see we get an HTTP response of 204, which means the object has been deleted. Let's go back into ice and refresh our portals list. And then once that comes up, you can see that our hotspot portal has now been deleted. Hopefully this has been valuable for you. You get to see the different ways of updating your different objects using the ERS commands, whether it's the put command or the patch command. You can see the responses that come back in different ways. And what I like to say to kind of remember the center response for the put and patch commands is with a put command, you send a lot and you get a little in response. With a patch command, you send a little and you get a lot in response. So send a little, get a lot, send a lot, get a little.